Winston, we're in Woodville Park here for the 11th cultural celebrations. Um, obviously, a big crowd of people here and a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, very much so. Um, today's event um, is basically a pilot scheme. Um, we are piloting the, the Bonfire Beacon project, um, which is aimed at expanding and developing um, the way in which we celebrate our cultural identity on the 11th of July. Well, William, a good crowd here today and for once decent weather for the celebration. Yeah, it's a very positive, big, big crowd of people as you've said. Uh, I think there'll be even more people here along later. Uh, there's a really excellent programme for uh, young and old. We've got talks on the Ulster Scots history and culture, the Orange Order and its culture and traditions. Uh, we've got music here, uh, family fun, uh, fun for attractions. Uh, we've got Ecstatic Live on tonight. We've got Harry Hamilton, Flash Harry, doing a Queen tribute. Uh, we've got fireworks, we've got the beacon, and I think we've got it all round, got an excellent programme, it has something for everybody. Well, James, Shackle Drumming Club's uh, taking part in the cultural celebration here today at Woodville Park. What sort of things are you going to be doing? Well, us as a drumming club, you know, I mean, we started a drumming club in 2001, and uh, we've got a good lot of new members in from the, the boys model, a lot of younger members. So we've come up today with four drums, and it's, it's probably a historic thing here. It hasn't been done for, for quite a few years. And we're doing a bit of uh, faith and drumming and letting people hear the, the original culture before pipe bands. I believe you have a very special drum with you here today. We do. We've, uh, we had got a drum um, lent to us, uh, and it's one of the original Hewitt drums. It's, it was made by Mark Hewitt in Sandy Row. And we, we were doing some research into the drum. Um, we've, we believe it's over 100 years old, um, and it's, we've, we've had playing today for the first time in, in probably 50 years. Um, now, it's not pulled up to the really really tight so we were just taking it easy but we're we're trying to get it into a situation where it can be, it can be played again on the streets and I, today we're playing it in Sandy Row for the first time in maybe 60 70 years We just have to be very careful with it. If something over 100 years old, you have to be very careful with. There's a few cracks in there and things like that, but we've had over to a good um, drum maker in, in East Belfast, um, William Morrow, and he's ha he'd had a good look at it. And uh, we think if we, if we keep it um, to a reasonable standard, we, we, sh we should be able to, to play it OK. Ken, you're here today in Woodville Park to give a lecture on the connection between military service and the Orange Order. Yes, the, there has been since the formation of the Orange Order a connection between it and military service. Now that connection has run right through from the very formation of the Order in 1795, through the Irish rebellions, through the Napoleonic Wars, through the First and Second World Wars, right through to the army in Northern Ireland and through to, through to the present day, the army in Iraq and Afghanistan, where there are still members of the Orange Order serving for sovereign and country. And down through the years, there's been quite a few famous soldiers and military personnel in the Orange Order. Just tell us about a couple of those. Absolutely. The ones who will be represented on the float in tomorrow's parade, uh, the two most famous are Rifleman Quigg, who won a Victoria Cross during the First World War, and a uh, chaplain foot from an Orange Lodge in Ontario who also won a Victoria Cross during the Second World War. We will have men on the float representing both of those famous Orange men who served their sovereign and their country.
Deirdre, there's been a lot of consultation in the community in the Greater Shankill about usage for Woodvale Park and this model is what you've come up with? Yes, um, it's the result of a lot of um, different workshops to consult the community. Um, they've tried different days and different times and they've consulted um, people who use the park but also community workers and youth workers to make sure that everybody's consulted. There's a lot of things, there's the allotments which we hope to attract older people but also younger people because they're thinking of um, having scarecrows that are built out of models of young people or people interested. That's just one of the ways to kind of do some intergenerational work. So, um, But they've also got a football pitch, possibly, but then there's lots of football pitches, so we're trying to think of different things. Um, there's a mother, mother and toddler facility, um, which would be enclosed, so it would be safe for the children, and it wouldn't mean that the um, parents would have to be inside all the time with them. Um, there's also, hopefully, um, plans for a shelter that's not actually enclosed, but it would be on top of a multi-purpose path. So the path would have a water feature and have facilities for things to be plugged in, like a kiosk or a chip shop. And those kiosks and chip, chip shops can be moved around as well, so that if there's events, it doesn't have to be in one particular place. And there's a path right through to really yeah. create a thoroughfare through the park, so that there's regular traffic through the park. Exactly, yes. Um, there, it's in the process of consultation exactly where the, par where the path would go, but the point is that it would be, as I said, multi-purpose. So it wouldn't just be a path. It would also be um, built in such a way that there's possibly going to be steps, which would double as seats for a music event or outdoor cinema or those sorts of things. So obviously it's going to breathe a lot of new life into the park, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Um, and it would be a bit more of a positive input into the park where a lot of people are afraid that the park being used at night is something bad, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, there obviously has to be more consultation about lighting and noise and how that would work. But if we get the situation right and get where things are situated in the new facilities, um, put in the right places, um, then everybody should be happy. Because obviously Woodville Park is a tremendous resource, as we can see on a day like today. Yes, absolutely. It's it's a really, really nice park. Um, it's one of the, the really nice ones that are around Belfast. Um, and if it's used properly and everybody enjoys it properly, then um, it can be a really positive thing. So obviously there's a lot of different things planned for the day. Tell us about some of the highlights. Well, tonight's going to be great now. You can see today there's loads of inflatables. There's a cyclone and that up there, different rides for the children. There's going to be a free barbecue here shortly. And um, tonight is going to be excellent. We'll have the Hounds of Ulster. They'll be playing and then we'll have Flash Harry. We're really excited about that. And then we'll finish off with a group called the Static and then the disco and the lighting of the beacon. Obviously the beacon here is a lot smaller than what people would consider a traditional bonfire. How do you think the crowd's going to react to that tonight? Uh, well, some will be for it, some will be against it. You know, it's just a pilot. This is a real positive way to celebrate what is an important part of the Ulster British um, history. I mean, beacons were lit here when William landed and arrived in Belfast. Beacons were lit when William and Mary came uh, to, to the UK and uh, ascended to the throne. The, the Lytton Derry Day, you know, there's a tradition in the Ulster British people of lighting fires and it, it is about celebration. When the design process was taking place, um, we had initially thought that the beacon was going to be um, for usage within a, a build-up area and therefore that's why the beacon had to be um, reduced in terms of its size. But because the process has evolved and people have seen the advantages and the benefits um, which the beacon provides, um, Belfast City Council um, basically allowed us the, the use of the park so that's why it looks relatively small in the, in the big open space. But in actual fact I mean that beacon is probably more like the size that the original beacons would have been that it's descended from? Very much so I mean part of the, the thought process um, when creating the beacon um, we decided to take it back to the roots. Um, beacon bonfires have been used um, over many centuries and were um, an, initially um, a navigation aid um, in terms of directing in the armies um, into the mainland. What about the beacon itself then? What's it constructed of? The beacon itself, it, it's a metal construct. Um, it, it has a base unit to it and then it goes up into a, a cone um, type shape. Um, the 
base of it is filled with um, crates, wooden crates, and the rest of the, the actual beacon construct is filled with willow. Um, it's a wood chip from, from the willow tree, which is a carbon neutral product. Do you think this is the way forward then for Protestant cultural celebrations? I mean, this is a real fun fair atmosphere. Those of us involved in Belfast Orange Fest have been trying to do exactly the same thing with the Orange Order celebrations on the 12th of July. Uh, the Protestant tradition is a proud tradition. It's a long tradition. It's a tradition that the people should be proud of. It's also a tradition that people should know more about.